Thank you. Uh, Desiree Kamika. Thank you for having us. Last week, I visited a friend in Seattle who used to live in a group home. He met me at the park with a Ziploc bag containing his meds because he'd been living in a homeless shelter and was too embarrassed to tell me. He has desperately tried to find employment, but his vocal communication is somewhat incomprehensible. It's not easy to find a job if people don't think you can communicate effectively. I'm not a parent, I'm not autistic, but I have a lot of friends who are. The current and future demands for affordable housing and support service options are overwhelming the supply. Almost all states have waiting lists for accessing waiver funding and opportunities that provide autism specific supports for adults are far and few between. The growth in out of home placements in nearly 20 years for an entire population with developmental disabilities is both meager and unsustainable. Michael John Carley, a self-advocate and witness at the last congressional hearing on autism, testified that our greatest need is in the present and that autism is a national service crisis. Communities across the country are rolling up their sleeves to create local solutions. They know they cannot rely on government supports alone and there's no time to waste. We need more research into issues of adulthood. We need immediate housing and support service options. And we must eliminate barriers in policy and regulations for people trying to create public-private partnerships. Fortunately, unfortunately, two barriers are standing in the way. The first is lack of research in adult-specific supports for adults. How does how do autism-specific settings, program structure, and or sensory-friendly environments influence quality of life? Those who have the most challenges are often the ones that are denied opportunities. What are better supports for those who elope, self-injurious behavior, or for those who become so frustrated their only way to communicate is through physical expression? These individuals are most often isolated in their family home, being continuously excluded from their community. Where will they live when their primary caregiver can no longer be there? What trainings, assessments, and retention strategies are most effective for direct support staffing? The second barrier is restrictive public policy. Policy must not limit the opportunities for autistic adults to live self-determined lives. New HCBS regulations stigmatize farmsteads as an example of an isolating setting, despite the fact that no research has been done on the quality of life for those who live in agricultural communities or intentional communities. Yet for neurotypicals, the New York Times has reported that agrihoods are the newest housing trend. Residential developments in which a working farm is the central feature in the same way that other communities may cluster around a golf course or a, pit, a pool, a fitness center. Why shouldn't autistic adults be able to choose an HCBS waiver for a home and community of their choice? Research is needed to answer the following questions. What incentives can influence the immediate increase of direct support staff and affordable housing opportunities to meet the needs of one million adults with a developmental disability who are living with caregivers over the age of 60? The housing and support options available for autistic adults in every state must be qualitatively and quantitatively assessed. How do they plan to meet the demand? Who's being left out or falling through the cracks? Are they meeting the needs and preferences of their constituents? What factors influence quality of life in private pay residential opportunities in comparison to publicly funded options? Are they more financially sustainable? The Coalition for Community Choice is not a special interest group. We are a coalition of families, advocates, organizations willing to work together on real, meaningful, and self-directed solutions to give adults on the spectrum the options they want for the future. Please, please advance both research and policy that decreases barriers and increases person-centered options for autistic adults. Thank you.